What I'm about to tell you is going to blow your mind. Half of the entire human population is infected with a parasite. That's four billion people from every country on God's green earth. Let me rephrase. One in two people are infected. Here's the kicker. Once it infects you, you will never be able to get rid of it. The parasite is called Toxoplasma gondii, and the disease it gives you is called toxoplasmosis. Now, most healthy people who are infected have no signs or symptoms and aren't aware that they have it. Some people develop signs and symptoms, including body aches, swollen lymph nodes, headaches, fever, and fatigue. People with weakened immune systems who have AIDS, are receiving chemotherapy, have had an organ transplant, they develop more severe symptoms. Seizures, lung problems, inflammation in the retina, confusion, poor coordination, it can even lead to death. For most of its life, the parasite stays dormant. It's referred to as a latent infection. What happens when it activates? It's been associated with numerous subtle, adverse, pathological, behavioral alterations in humans. What does that mean? The parasite changes your behavior and your personality, leading up to neurological disorders, particularly schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. It's altering the human mind. Don't believe me? Check this out. A 2012 analysis from France where an estimated 43% of people carry the T. Gandhi parasite concluded that men with a latent infection tend to be more dogmatic, less confident, more jealous, less impulsive, and more orderly than uninfected men. Infected women seemed warmer, more conscientious, more persistent, more insecure, and more sanctimonious. Czech researcher Jaroslav Fleger from Charles University in Prague says the infection made men more likely to withdraw, to become hostile or antisocial. Infected women, on the other hand, seek solace through social bonding and nurturing. They're inclined to tend and befriend. Several studies have looked into the correlation between T. Gandhi and the prevalence of patients with neurodegenerative illnesses, such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease and overall cognition. Results on causation are mixed, leaning to non-causal. However, correlation data is undeniably high. Cases of suicide, obsessive compulsive disorder, drug abuse, personality and anxiety disorders have been reported to involve the parasite more than control subjects without it. If you think this shit is crazy now, we haven't even gotten started. Every organism has a life cycle, and this is what the T. Gandhi's looks like. It reproduces inside the intestines of a cat. The cat sheds the parasite in its feces. The feces contaminate everything around them. Rats aren't picky eaters, so they end up ingesting contaminated food or water. The parasite takes up residence in the rat's brain. And once the rat gets eaten by a cat, it starts the cycle all over again. Cats in this situation are not an example. In fact, cats are an integral part of the reproduction cycle of T. Gandhi because it can only reproduce sexually inside the gut of a cat. There is no other creature on the entire planet that can propagate this parasite through sexual reproduction. Cats are the definitive host. Ready for one more mindfuck? Evolution teaches us that rats run from cats. Predator, prey. The way rats do this is by detecting cat pheromones. Rats infected with toxoplasma can't resist cat pheromones. In fact, infected rats become attracted to cats, going against every rule of nature. Just like it's rewiring the human brain, it's rewiring the rat's brain, flipping the hunter-prey relationship on its head. Where rats used to be scared of cats, now they're attracted to them. All the parasite wants to do is reproduce. It's evolutionary protocol. It can only reproduce in cats. Cats hunt rats, so once it infects a rat, it makes it fall in love with a cat. Cats eat rats, parasite ends up in cat guts, it reproduces. It's like Toxoplasma is this insidious spy that infiltrates borders, captures prisoners, brainwashes them, and brings them back to the enemy's side. 
This is straight out of a sci-fi movie. And this isn't something new. It's been around for thousands of years. It's infected half the planet. It lives in its host's brain. It manipulates and changes the host's mind. Its definitive host and master spreader is one of the cutest creatures on the planet and one that we house in our homes. We know what it's done to rats and for what purpose. Can it do the same to us? Is it already? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like our content and you'd like to support us, you can do that by liking, commenting, subscribing, and turning notifications on. And if you did not like this video, let us know. Leave a dislike, leave a comment and bash us. We like criticism because it helps us get better or feel bad. I'm not sure yet. Bye.